Welcome, my peeps, my peoples. Peep Squad is in the building, baby. So let's get into this situation with Jamal Bryant. He done stepped up off the porch, baby. He is feeling a certain type of way. He wants to clear his name, even though he was cheating with the woman that Monique Samuel said he was with. I don't know if he was cheating because supposedly if it happened a year ago, you were with that other woman, but you was also with Giselle. So are you and Giselle together? Or did you break up with that woman and then get back with Giselle? Or you and Giselle ain't never been together because it almost seems like you and Giselle never been together. And you didn't mention being in a relationship with Giselle Bryant at all, your ex-wife. So it's going down. And also, Jamal Bryant said that he wanted to go see Chris. I was like, you don't want to do that. So let's check out this situation. Lord have mercy. Again, it has been a gross misrepresentation of my character, my ministry, and my humanhood. There are a couple of things that have happened this season that require your immediate redress. Many of you who are watching bombarded me uh, with uh, accusations of abandoning my family, not being there for my girls, for their photo shoot, as if I was just in Atlanta frolicking around and participating in willful neglect. The truth of the matter is, I was in South Africa. I was in South Africa coming back for the photo shoot and had a delay in Frankfurt, Germany for six hours. Never see me on the Housewives of Potomac again. The producers knew it, the network knew it, and as a consequence, my flight did not land in enough time. And none of that was mentioned. None of it was brokered. None of it was represented. Secondly, um, what happened on the Housewives of Potomac is that many of you misguidedly thought that it was in real time. It was, in fact, recorded a year ago in 2019. And so you saw uh, my children who uh, were not happy with me, but you didn't have context. It was their first day of school, and this is the very first time in their entire lives at the first day of school, I was not present to pick them up or to take them. Any of you who have teenagers, the producers know it, understand the emotional roller coaster of teenage girls. As a consequence, I had just moved to Atlanta, understand the emotional roller coaster of teenage girls. And so it was adjustment for them. And it was for me. They are absolutely was uh, disparaging remarks made by my father-in-law, Mr. Curtis Graves, who is 83 years of age. He's 83 years of age, and unlike many, I was raised old school, that you never disrespect elders. I honor him. He's an amazing man has had incredible accomplishments, and he has every right to feel protective over his daughter. I've been divorced for now 10 years, and he and I have not had a heart-to-heart, man-to-man conversation about me breaking the heart of his baby girl. Anybody who is married or been married, and so it was adjustment for that working with in-laws is a process and it is a journey so that was in fact one of the very few times in 10 years that we have been in proximity but i want on record uh, that i honor him he's made tremendous strides in history he is uh, my fraternity brother and i want my children to always know uh, that i honor their grandfather and giselle's father I uh, then want to uh, move. Let me uh, make sure I'm on the right page of my binder because uh, you can't bring me receipts if I got the cash register. Mm. Uh, so um, let me.
Let, let me uh, press the cash register. Yes, um, I dated a young lady in New York. That working with in-laws is a problem. You all missed it. I've been divorced for 11 years. And single people date. And when you date, sometimes it works. And sometimes it didn't. In this instance, it didn't. Nothing immoral, illegal, or unethical took place. It did not work out. There is um, some clarity that needs to happen. Uh, I'm not married. I'm not engaged. So some of you have um, a strange relationship with language. You can't have a mistress while you're single. So I never had a mistress. As a consequence, she has never been to visit me in Atlanta, never been to Newburgh, never been in my home. I've never been in her home. Now, you would think that things, um, just in case you all missed it, move forward and people move on. They don't. Um, so if we're going to show text messages, let's show all the text messages. Let's show the text messages. Um, of uh, game to fly to Atlanta for my installation. Show the text message where I said, no, it's not a good idea. You're going to show the text message, show all the text messages where you asked to come down for Memorial Day. And I said, no, you can't come here. If you're going to show the text messages, show the text messages where you complained because I didn't open the door for you to speak on the Word Network. If you're going to show the text message, show all of them how it is that you wanted me to hire you to be on staff. I told you you weren't qualified. And move forward and people move on. They don't. Teamed up with your best friend, be with the Lord, and uh, generated a story um, because you wanted to redirect thought a story was getting ready to break that your baby is from your trainer and upset because he thought Giselle leaked it. And I want to tell you, Monique and Chris, it, it is not Giselle who leaked that, but uh, Monique, your best friend, Gigi. Uh, we, we had nothing to do with it. Um, you came um, hostile and angry, and it was misdirected rage. Misdirected rage um, because... Um, uh, you, you live in a house with a man who has anger management, uh, who doesn't mind uh, expressing volatile behavior. And, and everything that I'm saying tonight is um, not conjecture. Uh, this is not murder. Uh, this is uh, self-defense. Uh, and so on Sunday, for the first time in five years, I'm inviting my audience to watch the reunion, the Housewives of Potomac, where you will see Monique's husband try to attack my wife, my ex-wife, Ann Robin. And uh, security had to be called, and he had to be subdued. And I'm very concerned. Um, Monique, um, you all have uh, my phone number, as you expressed on the show, uh, but I had you all's address. And uh, because of grace, uh, I didn't uh, respond to that. Um, Chris, um, you got to, um, you got to take care of CTE. Yeah. So, and everything that I'm saying tonight is um, not conjecture. Uh, this, some of your former uh, teammates contacted me. They're concerned. I said Jamal, please don't respond um, because CTE is a progressive degenerative disease from a history of uh, trauma to the brain. Uh, and so just last week, um, you had an outbreak again of verbally assaulting a black woman in Safeway. We have the footage of that, but uh, I'm not going to hear that. But I'm asking you to please get help. Uh, I've tracked down your pastor, so all of what I'm saying is in love, so that your pastor can uh, help you uh, get the help. Uh, that is needed and that is necessary. Uh, none of this um, really 
ne necessitate it happening. I've not bothered any of you. I've not said anything disparaging against any of you. I've not attacked any of you. Some of your former uh, teammates contacted me. They're concerned. I said, Jamal, please don't respond. Um, because CT is a progressive degenerative disease from a history of uh, trauma to the brain. Um, but I thought it was necessary for a couple of reasons. Um, I thought it was necessary because of the failures of my past. It made the accusations of the present believable. And uh, many of you began writing on my social media with no. information began attacking me with no information start going all the way in with no information and I wanted believers to know that no matter what it is that you did in your past regrettably you did it um, but I thought it was necessary under the guise calling for prayer but it I didn't say that I was perfect, nor do I pretend to come for me unless I invite you. All of us are in a journey of a process of trying to be better, of trying to work out, and I am one of them. And so uh, you have to forgive me um, because um, I'm not going to hold you long. Pastor, Pastor, why are you running? I'm running because i got to get ready because Saturday, I got to feed 8,000 families in Atlanta who don't have groceries. I think I got to announce that here because none of these bloggers are going to write about that. I got to go because as soon as I finish that, I got to open up Christmas City for 1,000 disadvantaged children whose parents are incarcerated. They're in foster care under the guise calling for prayer. But it... I didn't say that I was perfect, nor do I to care, or that parents have been laid off in COVID. I got to go uh, because I got to go and further make sure that uh, by January 5th, we elect two senators from the state of Georgia and flip the state and change the nation. I got to go because I'm not called to entertainment. I'm called to empowerment. So I know that uh, many of you will still have stuff to say. I am not here to convince you. What I am here to say is I wish we would expend as much energy pushing positive than we do pushing negative. I wish when one of us falls or makes a misstep, we will cover them, protect them, and then push them. I wish that at some point or another, we would mature to care or be together. I, uh, I live in Atlanta, but I'm from Baltimore. I want to wish all of you a Merry Christmas and to all a good night together. I, uh, I live in Atlanta, but I'm from Baltimore. I want to wish all of you a Merry Christmas. What is going on with that situation? He said that Chris was at the grocery store. He was at the store and he went off on a woman and people were telling him that Chris, Monique's husband, has CTE. I was like, damn, what's going on? But come on, Jamal, them kids, them daughters, you know, they seem very unhappy, especially when it came to spending time with you, talking to you on the phone and actually going to Atlanta and visiting you too. But you proved Monique's case that you was with this woman and this woman does exist and you was with her and something happened in the relationship and she reached out to Monique Samuels to let her know, you know, what's going on. But it seems like you may have been with the other woman and Giselle at the same time or maybe you broke up with that woman, then got with Giselle. But at any event, you should have been at the reunion to have her back. 
because Monique Samuel's husband husband was there, where were you? And you're talking all this big, high, mighty stuff that, you know, you was going to pull up on Chris Samuels. You should have pulled up at the reunion. 